welcome back to A Little Box of Paints. My name is Sophie and today I'm going to show you how to use um, items from your recycling bin to produce a cute little pot holder for some small plants or herbs that you may have in your windowsill that you're just waiting to get out into the garden once spring arrives. Luckily where I am, spring is definitely in full swing. So I'm hoping that you'll be able to find some joy in this activity. It's great for families to do together. Honestly, it's pretty nice for adults to do on their own as well. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the materials that you're going to need and I'll show you how to do it. And uh, yeah, let's have some fun getting creative with a nice springtime activity. So to start with, you're gonna need to take a look in your recycling bin for some different uh, glass jars. Now I use these small salsa jars. The reason I like the salsa jars is because they are wide enough that I can put small planters inside them. And they're also the same size all the way around. They don't taper in or have a funny kind of bump to them. So these would be the best types of jars to use. Of course, you could do this activity with just plain ceramic pots if you'd like. The trick with those is that they usually taper down a little bit. So when you fold your paper around them with the decoration that you've created, um, the bottom part may cut off some of your design because it will get a little more narrow. So I recommend jars like this. Um, if it means maybe you have to have a taco night, that's probably not a bad thing. Okay, so find a few of these in your recycling. Another reason why I love this activity is because you can decorate your jars with anything, anything. I'm going to use marker today, but this would work with paint, color pencil, stamps, whatever. Okay, that's why it's great for kids of all ages. If you have kids who are really into drawing very detailed designs, um, they could maybe do a decorative covering that has um, some nice drawings or cartoons on it. I know it's kind of hard to see, but I'll show you up close in a moment. Um, I did some little bunnies and baby chicks on here, some little cartoons for Easter. Um, you could have your kids go for it with some finger painting, all right? And if you have stamps or even bingo dabbers, you could decorate it that way. So I'm gonna use markers because that's what I have. But like I said, you could really do anything. So the first thing you're going to need to do is come up with the uh, right size to cover whatever jar you have. Now, part of the reason, like I said, it's the same size around. It makes it very easy to measure um, your, your drawing or your painting surface onto this. So the materials, like I said, you're gonna need a piece of paper. I'm just using computer paper because I'm drawing mine. You could use color construction paper, watercolor paper, anything really, okay? Um, I've got my drawing materials here, some markers. Like I said, you can use what you like. Um, I've also got a pencil, trusty Sharpie, because I always have a Sharpie with me. Some scissors, a ruler would be helpful for this too. You can eye it out if you want, but a ruler is a good idea if you have one around. And I put a few different kinds of tape here for a few different reasons. Um, I taped this on. Part of the reason tape works well is, especially if you leave the label on your jar, um, the paper will just tape right to this, okay, the other label. Um, you can hot glue it if you'd like. White glue might get a little messy. It doesn't always work great with glass. That's up for you to, you to experiment um, with if you'd like, but I'm gonna use tape. So I've got just some plain scotch tape here. I've got some decorative washi tape, which I'll show you how I use this in a moment. And then if you think you're gonna end up putting your little potted um, designs outside, um, I would suggest maybe getting some large packing tape, the clear packing tape. And what you can do is you can actually cover it and protect it with packing tape. And then as you're watering or if it rains, um, your design won't get smudged or destroyed. All right, so it's up to you how you wanna do that. As always, I protect the surface that I'm working on, the table I'm working on. So I've got my mat down here, but newspaper would work well too. So we're gonna get started. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your jar and your piece of paper and you're just going to wrap it around. Okay, you've gotta kinda of eye it out so it doesn't quite go over the top lip um, where it curves into where the, the lid of the jar goes, but just kind of at the edge. Basically, if you've got your label on it still, just imagine that you want it to cover the label. So I'm gonna wrap it around fairly tightly. And this regular um, eight and a half by 11 printer paper or A4 size, um, it's gonna leave you maybe about two centimeters of overlap. Okay, which is fine, that's what you want. All right, so I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna hold it down. And parents or families, this is where um, it'll help you to kind of have this prepared before you actually start working with your little ones if they're really little. Um, you can just have the paper all cut up and ready. 
or if you can do it with them, it's really up to you. Um, and you're gonna hold it pretty tight and take your pencil and just make a little mark on the edges, okay, at the top. And then at the bottom, if you're using a light colored paper, you should be able to see where that label ends, all right? I'm gonna make mine so it goes just a little bit below where the label ends. And I'm gonna mark on both sides, the side that's folded over and the side of the paper that's under, okay? And when you fold it out, you should see where you've made those marks. And this is where the ruler comes in handy because you can line up those little tick marks on either side and lightly with your pencil, draw a line across. And then you will end up with uh, paper the size that you need to cover your jar. Um, you can cut it out. Now, if you wanna be you know, really proactive, you can actually measure the size of how big this is and just make another one right away, depending on how many jars you have. You don't have to wrap it every time. You can just keep repeating this on here before you cut them out. Um, I'm not gonna do that. I just need one right now. So I'm just gonna cut out the one that I have. So take your time with your cutting. You want a nice straight line. If you can see a little bit of the pencil, you can always erase it later. That's totally fine. Here we go. All right, so now I'm gonna take my jar and this is where you can work with the little ones if you'd like um, or have it prepared for them after. And I'm just gonna wrap it around and make sure that it fits. Don't stick it on yet because you've got to design it first, right? And as I fold this over, Looks good to me. So you can see I've just covered that label. So there's a little bit underneath and a little bit at the top, but that's all right because you don't wanna get your paper too close to the edge where it will start to fold over where it's kind of beveled in and curved. Okay, perfect. Now the fun part, you can decorate. Um, like I said, here's a picture of the one that I did before. Um, there are my little bunnies and my little chicks. I kind of went for a little more modern design. I didn't draw the whole thing. Um, and I picked the yellow flowers because they match the little chicks. Um, for this one though, I'm just gonna color in some bright color designs, okay? I'm not gonna worry so much about um, making it look perfect, that's okay. Now you'll notice where you tick marked, right? This area here, wait, wrong side, nope, right side. This area here is uh, going to be covered with paper. So you don't have to color that part if you don't want to. It's up to you and your, your kids to decide. Okay. So I am actually just going to do a bit of a rainbow. All right. So I've got some yellow. This is why it helps to have a mat underneath, right? Because you're just coloring right on the mat. Oh, doesn't matter. It goes off the edge. I really like these markers. They're brush pen markers. They're actually meant for um, doing lettering, but I just like them. I think they kind of color really well. Um, what next? We got some pink in here. You just have to be careful because if you layer them too much, you get some really dark spots, but whatever. It's fine. and it smudges real bad, so I'm like holding my hand up because I'm left-handed and smudging is my entire life. No matter what, the side of my hand is always covered in something if I'm creating. It's the curse of the lefties, but we're awesome in every other way, so it doesn't bother me too much. There we go, a rainbow. I know it's not the true colors of the rainbow, but that's fine. All right, so I've got my paper colored and ready. Okay, and I'm gonna basically get ready to wrap it around the glass jar. So um, what you're gonna wanna do is take just a little bit of plain scotch tape. Okay, I mean, you can use any tape, masking tape's fine. I'm just gonna use scotch tape. And you're gonna place it on the edge or the side that is going to go under, okay? So the part that you maybe didn't decorate. Okay. And then you just pick a spot 
Make sure that it's fairly uh, kind of in the middle so you're covering that label pretty evenly. Place it down and then this is where you want to pull pretty tight. Oh, whoops. You just want to pull pretty tight. Okay, and it should go all the way around. Perfect. All right, now this is where if you have some cool looking washi tape and you're gonna be showing this tape, right? It's gonna be on the outside. You can add this on or you can just use plain scotch tape. Okay, it's really up to you. I'm just gonna use some scotch tape for this. There we go. Pretty cute, right? Not so bad. Um, now, like I mentioned, if you wanna kind of protect it from the elements outside, um, that's where using a little bit of the packing paper will come in handy. Um, packing paper can be a pain to use sometimes. I recommend you, and I'm sure a lot of you already do this, you always just kind of fold over the edge so you don't spend forever trying to find that disappearing line, right? The invisible tape line. Um, so what you can do for this is, same thing, you're gonna kind of measure out how much you want. Now, I've seen people do it this way. I shouldn't say that. I haven't actually seen anybody do that. I thought in my mind that I would originally do it this way, okay, lengthwise, but the tape's not quite wide enough. So you're gonna have to do it up and down across, okay? Um, so I'm just gonna cut off this edge with the folded over part. And I keep it stuck between my fingers. And I'm gonna actually just tape it right over, just up top, right above. And I'm gonna stretch it down and then trim the edge. And hopefully I don't lose that little edge. Ah. All right, and you can do that all the way around. It might even help to pre-cut your tape pieces once you have an idea of how big they're gonna be. In fact, that's probably what I'm gonna do right now. Let's pick up these edges. All right, there we go, and I've got it. Now, if you don't like that shiny kind of tape look to it, you could Mod Podge it too as well if you've got Mod, Mod Podge at home. That would work well. And there we go. So I have two nice little planters to put outside or in my window, 
and uh, it just kind of jazzes up your flowers a little bit. So um, I hope you get a chance to do this activity with your family at home. It's kind of a great time for it. Um, it's a great activity you can do for Easter if you have some nice Easter plants coming in. Like I said, jars like this work really well, but of course you can do this on any type of pot. Um, you might even be able to, depending on how you set it up, if you create it kind of like my little bunny one here, it's really quite easy to just take off after and then you still have the pot underneath, especially if you're using washing, washi tape or um, masking tape because it doesn't damage the surfaces of anything, okay? Um, so I hope that you get a chance to do this with your family and uh, that you enjoy it. If you do create any, please make sure you share the pictures with me um, at the Facebook page for Little Box of Paints. If you want some more cool ideas, there's some great videos there too. There's also videos for grown-ups as well, where I show some meditative art for adults with a great cocktail pairing. And uh, you can check us out on Instagram as well, at a little box of paints. And uh, yeah, check it out. And the YouTube channel, of course, is a little box of paints. So thanks for watching. Hope you have some fun with this activity and uh, see you later.